Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor. Today we're talking about ENTP mad scientists. And you know, when you're an ENTP, it can feel a bit like you're operating at a different frequency or wavelength than anybody else you encounter. That means ENTPs, they suffer from often too much intuition, more intuition probably than any other intuitive personality type. What I've seen with ENTPs is just this uh, uh, tendency to uh, see reality as more or less an illusion, something that's not real. And uh, in that way, the ENTP identifies far more with the intuitive world, imagination and ideas. So that also means the ENTP is one of the most prone to experimentation. ENTPs, they like to run tests, they like to try out different ideas, they like to play with things, they like to come up with new ways of doing things. A lot of the time, everything an ENTP will say is from a position of devil's advocate. That means they will play with different viewpoints, they will see things from different perspectives. They'll say, what if the earth was flat? What it was?" What if the earth was a pancake? What if the earth was uh, um, hell? You know, they will go through all these kind of different ideas and uh, perspectives and they'll switch between these perspectives so easily. And so a lot of time when other people are talking to the ENTP, they can get the wrong idea about where the ENTP is coming from. I think uh, ENTPs, they don't really hold necessarily strong positions of uh, this is how the world is, black and white. Um, rather, what they see it as is more like a playground. The earth is a playground, a place to experiment, try out new things and to uh, see things from new perspectives. And the bolder you can be in your predictions and in your ideas and the more creative and the more far reaching your ideas are, the better. ENTPs truly enjoy and get energy and enthusiasm from ideas, but that also means they struggle with follow through. A lot of the time, the more real an idea becomes, the more boring it becomes. That means ENTPs prefer to work on never ending or impossible projects. That means uh, it's better for you as an ENTP if uh, the project you're working on will stay on a hypothetical scale or if the ideas that you entertain are too complex to be tried out at least this century. That means uh, you want to be an instigator, the person who creates and comes up with new possibilities rather than the person who picks up on new ideas and then polishes them, perfects them and places them in a physical context. So you're not the mechanic, you're the uh, Picasso, you're the artist, the person who first comes up with or entertains the thought, the person who draws the first blueprint. What I also see with ENTPs and successful ENTPs is that they often work on futurist projects. That means the future is their primary priority. The future is more, far more interesting than the present. That also means uh, just going over what could happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what should be done, what is possible with the perspectives of AI or with the perspectives of is the world a simulation? Is the world real? What's happening in the earth? You know, uh, in the frame of how do we deal with climate change and how will climate change transform our society? Uh, and so as an ENTP, it's um, about finding those kind of projects. I know as an ENTP in school, it can be kind of difficult because people will see you as a person who has so much potential, so creative, so intelligent, you know, uh, but they will also see wasted opportunity. They will see, oh, if only he put in more effort, if only he read all the rules before he handed over the assignment, if only he uh, was more on time with his appointments, if only he uh, did what he was told, if only he followed um, the ethical clause of school, you know. Uh, those kind of things can really hold an ENTP back and can cause an ENTP to more become a rebel rather than a successful student or um, valedictorian. So, as an ENTP, your primary issues, that, well, the issues of too much intuition are clear. Most of the time, 
in, the more intuitive you are, the more you struggle with grit. Grit, to exemplify it, is basically follow through. It's discipline. It's uh, uh, setting a calendar or a schedule for yourself. It's uh, working through something. It's continuing with a project even though you make mistakes. It's uh, not uh, um, losing focus. It is, uh, well, staying determined. It's the setting goals and setting standards for yourself and uh, holding yourself accountable that means you know going over what did i do wrong what can i do better how can i improve in the future it means uh, um, saying okay if i didn't finish this task or didn't do this well or didn't get an a here what can i do to improve or polish myself you know those kind of questions tend to really end up on the back burner for an ENTP because an ENTP's base inclination is uh, if something is difficult, well, find another way to do it. If something takes time, well, see if there's something else you can do that goes faster. So it can be that you're on this idea roller coaster and it's like you're speeding through and you're t thinking of something and you're trying to put it together and then you notice that, oh, this was kind of difficult and then you go, okay, I'll do something else then. Maybe there's another idea that's more easy. And that's how you end up going. You go skimming through all these ideas and you flip through all these pages, you're reading all these different books, you're switching school subjects back and forth, you're uh, multitasking, but you never really put anything out, you never really finish anything. Now, while you might feel discouraged by hearing this, at the same time, what you want to know is, well, you're on the way to becoming a jack of all trades. So while you're studying all these different subjects and switching from different academic specializations, what's happening is your brain is becoming so flexible. It's becoming uh, able to see things from a million different perspectives. You're able to look across disciplines. You're able to think about things from the bigger picture. So it's easier for you than for any other type to speculate on a multitude of different uh, possibilities you can you can apply a multitude of different practices in your problem solving and in your work that means you're able to apply whatever you picked up from academia whatever you picked up from your personal hobbies and whatever you watched on YouTube and you're able to put it all together to come up with truly original approaches that also means uh, as an ENTP mad scientist recognize that uh, this is kind of how you appear to other people at times when you're talking. When you talk, other people can't always follow your trend of thought. They cannot see how A led to E. They cannot see B, C, and D. They uh, stumble on all the details and all the uh, small inaccuracies of what you say. So if you're talking about something or explaining something and you're doing it in a rough or a roundabout way or if you're switching between different thoughts and patterns and perspectives while you do, people don't know how to nail you down. They don't know what you're saying. They don't know what intentions you have. You don't, they don't know why you're doing what you're doing. They don't know... Uh, how you do what you do, uh, basically you're appearing like this uh, Merlin-like figure. You're appearing like this crazy uh, wizard, uh, <laughs> this uh, person who is just uh, quickly skimming through and saying random words and uh, nobody else has any idea what's happening around you. And that's um, worth recognizing, okay? Not everybody is going to be able to figure out or follow your track of thought. So, um, do pursue and uh, find people around where you can really talk to, people that can really give you good input back and forth. Make sure that you uh, are able to bounce with and to trade with other people and uh, make sure that you have people around you that have the patience to follow through and to listen to and hear what you're saying. Or at least that uh, people understand your results, that even though they don't know how you do it, you do it. So. Uh, you're a more than capable just because people don't understand how you do it doesn't mean you don't know how to do it so uh, that's an important point of view um, beyond that you know uh, take the time to write down your ideas and your thought process and try not to rush through it too much that means uh, you know develop grit in the name of idea so if an idea is worth the time give it the time if an idea is too crazy too important too uh, full of potential 
give it your effort you know notice as well that there's not always going to be anybody out there that's going to be available to pick up on your blueprints there's not always going to be somebody out there to clean up your mess there's not always going to be somebody around that will uh, be able to finalize your ideas so notice that uh, sometimes you are the person sometimes the idea came to you that means you are the one responsible for seeing it through so if an idea has come to you and if something seems great recognize that uh, you have a duty a responsibility to this idea and you have to do something with it and you have to do your best with it you can't rush it you can't uh, speed through it because a hastily executed idea is often a badly executed one so make sure you really put in the extra effort if an idea is worth it thanks for watching and see you all in the next video